Hey everyone, Eric Grotebois. So I'm doing a deeper dive on one of the new takes that I've heard in a while on the evil stepmom scenario. Now I wanna give a caveat. I am sure that there are evil stepdads. I'm sure that there are. The thing is that men, statistically speaking, live less years than women. So you're more likely to have the evil stepmom outlive the evil stepdad, right? The evil stepdad can still be evil, but he dies first. And then you have the evil stepmom story. And so here's the evil stepmom story. And it's the same every time. So dad dies, he doesn't have a good estate plan, or sometimes he does, and that's a different story for a different day. But in my story, dad dies and he doesn't have anything. He doesn't have a will, he doesn't have a trust, doesn't have the power of attorney, he's got nothing. And so evil stepmom, and by the way, she's evil, um, she immediately starts changing the locks, she empties the bank accounts, she, um, they find that she's been forging dad's signature and they find the evidence, they find a piece of paper with her practicing his signature so that she can write checks then she forges a power of attorney giving her power. And so then she can walk into the bank and say, hey bank, I got this power of attorney for my husband. I don't know where she got the notary to go along with it. I wasn't there for that part of the, the story. But in any case, the kids are kind of left with like, what do we do, all right? And, and there's a little bit of a resignation, right? There's an old expression, possession is nine tenths of the law. And what that really means is if you have something in your hand, it's harder to get it out of your hand than if it's not in your hand and you want to get your hands on it and it's nine tenths of the law. So the evil stepmom emptied the bank account. So now they have to go after her, hire lawyers, go to court, do all these things to try to get the money back. And even after they do all that stuff, it's gonna take months to years, and then who's to say the money's not gonna be gone? Um, or there was artwork and jewelry and a watch collection. It's all been pawned, it's all been sold, it's gone, right? And so is there a way that with lots of effort you could chase it down and get it back? Probably, you know, probably. But is it gonna be easy? No. Is it gonna be cheap? No. Is it, and is it, are you guaranteed of success? No. And so at the crux of this story actually, because unfortunately dad was an international man of mystery. So he had half his assets in Colombia. So we got Colombian laws and the lady's Colombian. So she's pulling all her strings over there. And then he's got the other half of his assets in the United States. Now, funny thing, little side note, I go, oh, well, you know, your dad was from a foreign country, so maybe he just didn't know about the right way to do things. And the guy was like, uh, no, he's been in America forever, and he went to university here and you know, spoke English with barely an accent. He should have known better. I'm like, okay, he should have known better. So what they do is dad goes to a friend and says, hey, friend, and this is like a really unusual story, and says, hey, friend, I'm gonna pay you $150,000, and you're gonna give me a power of attorney to collect the rent on a condo that you own, and I'll manage the condo for you, and I'll collect the rents, and from here on out, the rents are mine, but it'll be in your name. Which, by the way, and, and that power of attorney wasn't in writing, which means it's completely null and void, because anything involving land or real estate is bound by the statute of frauds, which means it must be in writing. But what do they know? They're from Columbia. So they're collecting rent for years and years and years. And then finally they say, hey friend, I'd like you to transfer the property to me. And the friend's like, okay. So the friend signs a quick claim deed and transfers the property over to an LLC owned by the son. And so the son says, hey dad, um, you know, in the building, the president of the building really doesn't like you and me and you have the exact same name. So why don't we put it in the name of our wives, my wife and your wife. And so on the same day, in 2019, there are four identical operating agreements executed for this LLC, which by the way, I was like, why do you need an operating agreement since you're doing everything else informally? And he goes, oh, we needed to get a loan. And so the bank required uh, proof of corporate documentation, which is totally normal. And so they go to the bank and they have four identical operating agreements, identical in every way the same, except for on the last page, it had different combinations of people and percentages. So there was one that was 90, 10, dad and stepmom. There was one that was 51, 49, evil stepmom, uh, son's wife. There was one that was son and dad. And so it's like, which one is it? No one knows. And so then they think that they can just change the ownership of the company by filing annual reports with Sunbiz, the state of Florida's corporate website, and just adding authorized members or subtracting authorized members. None of that's accurate, by the way. None, none of that is true, and this could get litigated forever for so long. And so at the end of the day, best case scenario is we rely on the operating agreement that's 90-10 dad evil stepmom, and then half of dad's 90% goes to son because it's the law of intestacy because you don't have a will, and so it's half to wife, half to children, and so half of dad's 90% goes to mom, half of dad's 90% goes to son, and then, so that's 
45% would end up being sons, which means he's a minority in a company. And typically that means he's non-voting, so he can't have any say over anything. And so all he would be entitled to is collecting money. There's so many things wrong with this story. There's so many ways that it could have been right. And all I can say is that dad left a mess because he didn't spend, I don't know, three hours with an estate planning attorney and a corporate lawyer to get everything sorted out, maybe 5,000 bucks. Instead, everyone's screwed, the evil stepmom's stealing from everyone, and who knows what's gonna be left over. So if you guys have any questions or comments, leave one below, and hopefully this won't happen to you or your family.